Okay, so I did a video on this a while back, I do believe. This is my um, thorium heavy water reactor, nuclear reactor, with uh, beryllium reflector rings. I'm using carbon on the top and the bottom. So I have heavy water in here, thorium nitrate. And uh, maybe, let me um, just take this guy. I'm going to put these guys away from my other sources, put them downstairs, and let, let's try taking a spectrum and, and see what that looks like. It should be interesting. See if we have any um, transmutated materials in our little sample here. So it should be interesting. Okay, so here we go. Let's look at the Rady code spectrum. And uh, it looks like I have a bunch of peaks. I actually ran it longer than I wanted to. And uh, if you watch some of my other videos, as I explained before, the, the peaks are off a little bit. Like they're read a little bit lower than what they really are. And uh, I did some calibrations on that. So this is uh, so this is our thorium spectrum from our thorium reactor. And this peak here is probably actually that peak because they're off a little bit. 2609 KeV, uh, thallium 208, chain of thorium 232. Okay. Uh, here's some interesting peak in here. I don't think it can be radium or radon because unless there's some uranium impurities in that thorium sample because it was a thorium reactor. Okay, but there's some radiation peaks here which may not be in the library. Here's another peak, actinium uh, 228, a decay chain of thorium 232, so that's probably what that is. Okay, and here, again, actinium, actinium uh, 228, uh, decay chain of thorium 232, so that's probably what that peak is. And here's another thallium 208 peak at uh, 571 keV <coughs> from the thorium decay chain. Looks like there might be another peak here, radon, radium. So the radon, radium uh, 226 is from uh, uranium, so Maybe there was a, some uranium impurities in that sample. Okay. And here is lead. It's probably lead 214, which is from radium and radon. So there must be some, possibly some uranium impurities in there. And x-ray from lead. So that could be lead in there, radioactive lead. Of course, this uh, green trace down below is the background, and you can see that um, the uh, actual yellow trace is a lot higher than the background, and that, and it's, I believe I'm going to have to compare it to the uh, thorium trace that I took, just pure thorium that wasn't in heavy water ever, but I believe that that was a lot closer to um, the uh, background, and so this, this high radiation could be because... Uh, uh, the neutrons from the reactor uh, caused other things to become radioactive, so you're just getting a high background, a bunch of different types of radiation in there. Oh, there's another thorium peak right there. Anyway, or uh, my second theory is, is that maybe there's some high energy gamma ray. That's the way these detectors work is that uh, they have to absorb the whole energy of a gamma ray, and if uh, the gamma ray is high enough energy so it's not all absorbed in the detector or it maxes out or sometimes uh, the gamma ray will come in and it won't leave all of its energy and so it's called escape peaks and it will cause a big background because they're not getting the full energy of the photon so they, they could be you know various fractions of it so they'll produce a continuous background spectrum so it could be from escape peaks but definitely um, the radiation I think is a lot higher in this sample that has uh, been exposed to heavy water and so I'll have to do the analysis to compare it but well let's take a look at that it should be interesting okay okay so let's take a look at the data and um, I'm going to compare the two traces and talk about the differences here 
So the blue trace is the heavy water thorium, and the uh, red trace is the thorium. And I think you have to remember here, it's not exactly apples to apples. I'm just looking at the peaks because when I took the thorium, it was a big container of thorium. So it had a lot of thorium in it. And uh, the reactor only had a tiny bit of thorium. Yet it looks like certain radiation peaks are actually higher. Let's, let's, I'm going to zoom in on portions of it. So, you know, this is like maybe two pounds of thorium, and this is like a few ounces. So um, I think when we looked at our spectrometer, we guessed that this was a lead peak. And uh, what I'm going to attribute this, so, so the first thing I see is a, sh a frequency shift here. And I was trying to reconcile that. And I think it's real. Um, it could be either uh, maybe the calibration of the detector changes day to day depending on the temperature, that was my first thought. Or maybe it could be a real shift because, um, I, I hope it doesn't shift that much, but this is quite a few bins. Um, it could be that because the uh, photons are coming out through the heavy water, they scatter and they lose energy, so all these peaks are downshifted because they've lost energy to the heavy water. Now the other thing I think is interesting is that uh, the sh peaks from the heavy water reactor are a lot sharper and so since this was actually a um, um, large amount of thorium that wasn't in the heavy water, we should probably compare the base of this to the base of that. So maybe if I uh, shift this guy down a little bit, I'll put a fudge factor in here to shift it down some. Okay, so if we assume that this is like a constant background here, then these peaks are definitely lower then and less, um, less sharp, which means that there's more x-ray energy in these peaks. Now, if there's lead in there, which there could be from decay or whatever, uh, it could be, be hit by a lot, being hit by a lot more radiation from uh, the reactor, and that's why these peaks are more defined. I suspect the reactor is putting out a lot more radiation. Okay, I guess that shifts down the rest of them. These are some higher up peaks in this energy range. And everything is definitely shifted down that comes from the reactor. I'll see here, at, at the very high levels, these are pretty close. So maybe that is a good assumption to, because the, uh, you know, it's not really comparing apples to apples because there was a lot more thorium in the, uh, the uh, unheavy water reactor sample than there was in the heavy water. I mean, this is just a tiny bit like maybe one one hundredth the amount of uh, material of thorium in here, yet it's got some very big radiation peaks. So it looks like probably um, the uh, reactor is increasing the amount of radiation coming out of it, and it's uh, manifesting in these lower energy x-ray peaks here, and uh, probably coming from lead. Those are, seem to be associated with lead, according to our spectrometer. And so, very interesting. We might be doing some more work on this type of stuff. And see if we can get some interesting results from that. Anyway. Anyway, this is uh, Dr. James, and thanks for watching.